Hey, how's it going? I'm Ivy Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so we're going to start things a little differently today. Look at all the dollies, pretty in lace. But something hides behind their lovely little face. The smart will run whilst they have fun. Perfectly formed to get the job done. Flawless in white, blameless in red. If one gets too close, you might lose your head. So yes, look at all the dollies, pretty in lace. But never forget what's behind their face. An empty shell for an evil soul. When they say you get you, the bell will toll. So, why am I starting today's vlog reading? A very very tiny extract from Welcome to Mary's Vale. Well, the weekend of this being filmed, Broken Before Use, is on its free promo. For those of you who've been paying attention to my end card, <laughs> you might really be aware of that. Um, I know that this is the, the Friday before that happens because I said I was going to be filming this next one on a Friday. Um, when this goes up, it will be the Friday before the free promo for Welcome to Marysdale. Um, Welcome to Marysdale does not get nearly enough love. <laughs> and considering this was the one that I wrote first, um, it probably should get a little bit more love. Um, as I've said before, I feel like this is the more consistent horror of the two. Um, I mean, Broken Before Use definitely has the the creepier, scarier moments to it, but Welcome to Mary's Bell is definitely the, the more consistent horror. Um, the, the tone is very consistent throughout. I'm not saying that the tone of Broken Before Use is inconsistent, but you do kind of reach that halfway point and it becomes more dark fantasy than necessarily horror when, as I say, as I, 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 I keep saying this, I keep saying this, Broken Before Use has the better horror moments, but Welcome to Mary's Vale is the better horror. Um, just overall, it's, as I said, it's the one that I wrote first. Um, so, I, I, because basically I'm filming this before Broken Before Use gets its free promo and I it will be released right before Welcome to Mary's Vale gets its free promo. Uh, obviously, this is Kindle free promo, so it's free on Kindle. It's not this version of it is not free, unfortunately. Um, just the uh, <laughs> just the Kindle version of it is, uh, is free um, for, and it's a five day promotion for each. So um, just double check the end card for the exact date. I I can't remember. I think it's the fifth to the ninth for Broken for You. So obviously that's before this comes out. Um, and then it's the, I have no idea what the date this will come out on, um, <laughs> doesn't help. I, I feel like the 14th is in there somewhere, but I'm not completely sure. Um, but yeah, because of that, I figured I should talk a little bit more about the two Dollmaker Sun books. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, but technically speaking, Welcome to Mary's Vale is kind of, um, and I know I've mentioned this in like some of my like very, very early vlogs. Um, I mentioned that uh, obviously there was the big, the Tale Saga is my main sort of fanfic series, but I also did a fanfic series with some of the characters uh, being loosely based on some of the people that I knew. Um, on the Yu-Gi-Oh forum that I was a part of, yugiofans.co.uk, um, and wrote something called the the Why of the Fanfic, um, and none of, none of the none of, obviously none of the characters that were based on real people appear on this, but some of the my own created characters um, transferred, <laughs> and and were basically. Some of the events that happened in YF the fanfic are the reason these two books exist. Uh, it's the, the sort of the source, the, the inspiration, um, certainly for the events of Welcome to Marysdale. Um, as I said, I've no plans at the moment to make um, YF the fanfic available again. Um, I mean, it was like very highly fictionalised fictionalized versions of, of the people that I knew, so 
wasn't strictly speaking based based on them it was just like taking their screen names um for the names of the characters and then going from there that's basically what it was um it was a little bit of fun <laughs> um but me being the right ahead that i am um i did come up with like I, 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 one of the things I've, I've always kind of done with my fanfics, whether it was the Yu-Gi-Oh fanfic or whether it's YF fanfic and even to some degree the South Park fanfic that I wrote, um, I like to sort of use it as kind of a, um, I want to say breeding grounds, um, but I, I guess sort of something like that for uh, basically trying out various ideas um, and plot elements and um, various sort of things that have become very much part of my my multiverse got their first sort of trial run in one of my fanfic series is, as a kind of let's kind of like flesh out this idea let's see what we've got with this idea let's see how we can sort of take this idea um and so sort of the main big thing um that kind of came out of of that for for this particular for these particular ones was very much the Seiyusen. Um, the Seiyusen had their first kind of outing um, in my the fanfic series. Um, I mean, I'd had the Genesis uh, for their, their concept uh, quite a bit before that. Um, certainly, they're certainly based on a lot of nightmares I had as a kid, a lot of the things that I was very much afraid of as a, as a child. So, but, you know, their, their, their roots were sort of there anyway um the wire for fanfic very much allowed me to sort of establish exactly why they were so much of a threat what their weaknesses were what their strengths were um you know their basic kind of characteristics um and presentation and and various things like that so um the say you said uh, definitely owe wire for fanfic a lot for basically working out the kinks in their design and turning them into, in my opinion, one of the most terrifying <laughs> creatures. <laughs> Not everyone is going to agree with that because what scares different people scares different people. Um, so to me, they are scary because they represent a lot of things that I am afraid of. Um, but for other people, they're not necessarily going to be as uh, scary because that the, the kind of thing that they represent is not the kind of thing that uh, that particular person is afraid of. Um, so it, it's, yeah, just, it, for me, I, I do have this kind of, I don't, I don't hate the, the say you said, I'm not like terrified of the say you said. Um, I don't sort of like have a love-hate relationship with the say you said, I actually quite, like the say you said as a concept, um, it, it's one of the things I've said before where if you write about the things that you are afraid of, you can sometimes develop a really good story. Um, and, you know, it, it, it challenges you more as a writer to sort of not take the kind of the easy route and sort of back away from things. Um, obviously, I'm not an overly graphic writer in terms of gore and stuff i think like nothing is scarier than a, than a person's own imagination which is why some people will find these books scarier than other people will and i i respect that um i am not a master horror writer i'm not writing books that are going to scare everybody i'm fully aware of the fact that um you know different as i said different people are afraid of different things um some people will class these books as being more dark fantasy than horror, which is fine because they, they are elemented uh, dark fantasy. And it's one of the reasons why um, I, I do tag them under both horror and dark fantasy, because they, they are kind of both. Um, and, you know, some people are going to find them find it, and it's quite good that some people have already told me they are quite creepy. <laughs> I'm like, I like Creepy is good. Creepy is the right side of horror for what these books are. There's, as I said, there's, um, there is definitely a lot of creepy imagery. Um, and as, as I keep saying, Broken Before Use has the scary moments, but Welcome to Mary's there is some more consistent horror. Um, I would probably make the argument that Broken Before Use is more the dark fantasy of the two. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm not too worried that from how I've 
from how I feel about it right now, um, the next book, the first book of the, the second arc, feels more like a dark fantasy. Um, there are definitely creepy moments, and I, I think a lot of the a lot of the moments which are there, which could be made creepier, um, I can probably I can probably make them creepier as I go through and edit things. Now that I've got a better idea, so I, I've now finished writing it. By the way, <laughs> I've finished writing it. I have now started writing the second one, um, which is currently under the title of. Damaged after opening, um, I, I I sort of played around with um, with the idea a little bit more. Um, I still can't remember what the strings something the strings strings or something, whatever it was that I want as the arc title. Um, so I definitely think Curse from Mayo is the title for the first book, and Damaged after opening is probably going to be the second title uh, for to be the title for the second book, and then I just have to remember what really great idea I came up for for the, for the arc title because <laughs> I think it will work really well um, just based on how I feel like the two books are going to go. Um, I definitely like when I go back and and do actually start editing um, Curse of Mayo. I want to make sure that I put more creepy elements in there um, and heighten like the. And, and again, I don't necessarily want to make it full horror horror because I, it. I I think the series as a whole is going to end up being more dark fantasy because horror is incredibly hard to write, just because as I said, not everybody is scared of the same things. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's about creating the right kind of atmosphere. Um, so I'm going to like make the atmosphere a bit creepier, um, you know, elongate some of the descriptions um, when, where I need to in order to sort of make it a bit creepier um, and sort of creep it a little bit more towards the horror end. But I think primarily the, the series as a whole is probably going to end up being more dark fantasy um and so this pair of books if they end up being more dark fantasy than horror that's fine um as i said it's more working on and making sure i create the right atmosphere for them than it is necessarily worrying um whether or not they they come out as necessarily being horror because i think they i, I think it'll be fine if the rest of the, the collection the rest of the series um ends up being more dark fantasy because dark fantasy is probably what I'm going to be better at writing. <laughs> just, just kind of overall, I think it's what I'm going to be better at writing um, than horror because horror is an incredibly hard genre to write in. Um, so I, I do appreciate that. I mean, as, as I said, I do kind of get to a point where I'm not entirely sure how scary my writing comes across anyway. Um, I know I am a fairly dark writer in terms of themes, um, but that doesn't necessarily make me a good horror writer. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pegging for these books to be more dark fantasy than necessarily horror, but if I can put the horror, horror elements in there, that's just gonna, you know, tie everything together. And I mean, it's tied together already because it's the same, it's the same group of characters um, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, definitely interesting. <laughs> Definitely interesting uh, so far. I mean, the, the you know the the um, the whole sort of you know genesis for, for everything um, being basically I wanted to explore the Seisen a little bit more. Um, that's what that's why this this book exists. If it weren't for the Seisen, this book wouldn't exist. And if you want to know what a Seisen is, I do have a video on this channel somewhere which does talk about the Seisen. <laughs> But it's probably really, really quiet. So. <laughs> oh, horny. Um, but in in short, the Seiyusen are a form of demonic doll. Um, but your concept of doll is probably slightly different to my concept of doll within the multiverse because it doesn't necessarily mean a small child's toy. <laughs> it almost definitely does not mean a small child's toy. Um, 
because that's that's the thing. I uh, one of the things that I do do um, within within the multiverse is I change conceptions about what what things are and how things are classified. Um, the whole idea that uh, everything that has a heart, mind, body, and soul is technically speaking human because those are the human elements. So your gods are human. Um, for example, <laughs> I like I like sort of like challenging those, those sort of those sort of ideas. Um, so yeah, it's it's very much very much a case of uh, yeah. I, I like being in the multiverse and using the multiverse's rules um, for for these books in a much more active way than I do with another eight and stuff. Um, and this one is free this weekend. This one was free last weekend. So if you picked up this one last weekend, maybe pick up this one this weekend. You know, for everybody paying attention to my free book schedule. Um, and, you know, find out in much better terms exactly why you should be scared of the Seisen. Because I I would not want to encounter a Seisen. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, 100% I would not want to encounter a Seisen. Um, I mean, I know that it's sort of based on, you know, I, I have created something to be something that I would be afraid of. So, of course, I wouldn't want to encounter Seisen. But I think most people would probably agree not not say so not the thing that you really want to run into. Um, they they are I'm hoping in concept, if not a terrifying, then at least a good concept for a horror villain <laughs> as it were. For a horror monster, would monster be a better term? Monster might be a better term. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's me babbling rather randomly about lots of stuff to do with the Shadow Beneath the Light series, um, and where this book has come from, um, uh, and uh, this was the one I wrote first, so that's why, that's why it's where this book has come from. <laughs> this book didn't exist, this book wouldn't exist, um, so... Yeah, a little bit of a history, a little bit of a history of these books, a little bit of a history of where the Seisen sort of got their start in my writing, a little bit of more information as to how things are going with the next two books in the Shadow Beneath the Light series. Um, hopefully you're intrigued enough to want to sort of check out uh, some of the, the, the two Dollmaker Sons books, but the two Dollmaker Sons books, because they're, 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 they're worth, worth checking out. Very, very sure they're worth checking out. Um, and I know I did sort of like randomly read a very, uh, very short, very, very short excerpt. I didn't even read like the full excerpt because I missed out the character speaking. <laughs> I just re read out the, the Say Sen poem that I created because that's the kind of writer that I am. <laughs> but eh, maybe you're intrigued by it, maybe you want to know more. So, um, right, with that all said and this rather all over the place and babbly vlog done, I guess, um, I hope you found it sort of interesting at least intriguing enough to maybe want to check out the Dollmaker Sun books um I hope you're looking forward to seeing what I'm going to babble my way through next time and I will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe see ya